This is recording, this is recording. It is really a miracle to me, it still is, why some people improve or want to improve, are willing to improve, and some other people don't. In all my years, now I'm 42 or 43 years old, I'm born in 1974, you do the math. I, I met so many different kind of people and I didn't even know what improvement is before. I mean, when, when I grow up, I learn about sports and diets, and all sorts of different diets, all sorts of different sports, of different methods of wellness, of taking care of yourself. But this spark of wanting to improve, of getting better, or progress daily, um, I think it's more in our culture now than it was before. Maybe before it was just something um, people did naturally or didn't. So uh, today I want to do a little video about fall prevention. Just a, a few very simple movements and I think they're going to be very effective or it, I, I saw that they're very effective. I want to talk about a woman I was working with lately, she's, I think she's 87 years old, something like that. And she has this drive, this, first it was her daughter, of course, she brought her to my practice. She made the appointment, her daughter, because her, her mom wasn't doing well in walking. She was very unstable, she would fall, and when you fall at 87, this, this is a, can be a problem, can be earlier. Uh, but especially in that age, it becomes very dangerous to fall. And her mom wanted her, my client, my student, to be more safe on her feet when she's walking. Because when she's walking in her apartment, she was on, always touching the wall and she wouldn't like to go out anymore. Um, and see, that's, that's what I think. Some, some people, I think that they... They act like, at least, they, 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 as if they bought their body in a store and then they just use it to whatever they do. Maybe they have great jobs and they do a lot for society, but they just use it. And they use it and they do sports, maybe because of the social aspect or because the doctor told them to do sports and they do sports. Maybe, but in Austria it's only... It's less than 30% of people who actually do sports. Maybe it's different in your country, but you, mean you see all these people running around, but if you look at the stats, at the official stats, it's not that many people. It just appears that a lot of people do sports nowadays. Or maybe because it's in the media, so present. And then when the body is used up, people they just sit in their room waiting to die. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, and then there's diet. So diet, food, the eating. So, so the, the client I have, see I have a pig here. Can you see the little pig? And then here I have a little cow. Is it a cow? Eh, doesn't look like a cow, it has a huge penis. Seem, <laughs> it's more like a, a how, how do you call it, a toro? And in her case, my 87-year-old client, um, that was like World War II time and she was li living in a bad area and her father actually got shot in the forest by some guy. She doesn't even know why. It wasn't, it was it's just like people got shot at that time and then her mom was a single mom and that time, uh, like in the 1940s, something like this, this was not, not, not a good thing to be a single mom. So her mom had to go to work. And it was very, very terrible for the, for the children. And now she likes to eat meat. She's 87 and she basically only eats meat. I think that's a problem, but I don't talk about diet with her, of course. I just talk about movement. And we made great progress. And um, how do I tell you what I... Am I even in the picture? Uh, so I worked like eight hours with her and she's doing exceptionally well. And she has this drive, like in, the, in class, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with her, she, she sings songs to me. <laughs> she's so happy when she, when she feels safe and secure and she didn't have any kind, never had a therapy like this. I mean, Feldenkrais is not a therapy. I just work and I give her opportunity to learn and to become more secure. 
<clears throat> secure, yes, stable. So at the first couple of hours, I just let her lie down on the table and she didn't want, she couldn't roll her head because she was afraid of falling. The table is like, our, our tables are low, but she, she's, a, she's afraid of falling. Uh, so I worked with her legs, with her feet, just the, the knees to the side, and even put the knees to her side. He, he started to hold the table. <laughs> so we did very small movements, and last in the last in the last hour, I could twist her on the table. Put the knees to the side, the head to the other side, the arms to the side, the arms to that side, the knees to that, side, and she felt safe, and she had a good time, and she was laughing, and she's a lot better now in walking, and. Uh, I did a, the movements I'm going to show you. Okay, we come to the point. Uh, two points, the, the movements and the other one, why do we want to improve? So when you watch this video and l when you listen to me six minutes talking, you obviously have a strong drive to improve. You want to know the movements, you want to know the story. You, uh, what is the question? How, where, where does this drive come from? Does this drive always come from pain or a deficit? Do we only want to improve after a disaster period or can we improve as a natural function just like eyesight develops and speech develops, sexuality, does sexuality, yeah, it, sexuality develops, you don't have it when you, maybe yes of course the theory is that babies have sexuality but you don't live your sexuality before a certain age, you don't have pubic hair before a certain age and I think maybe this, this sense of Wanting to take care of yourself also may evolve, evolve, come apparent at a certain age, just de develops like a natural function. And I don't think there needs to be a disaster. But for me, it was a disaster. I had pain. Ah, no, no, I, I found the Feldenkrais method out of interest. See? It was just, I was like, 10 years younger, I was like 20 something, and I, I found the, the Feldenkrais method because I was fascinated by the movement. That's it. And then I used it <laughs> to fix my problems and, and some, some gymnastics. Okay, let me show the movements I did with her last lesson in standing. So I'm in my bedroom. I don't, ha I don't like to, my practice I rent at the moment is just too dark. And uh, even though people think it looks nice, I'm not very comfortable there, so uh, I prefer to work here. Can you, can you see me? Can you see my feet? Hello, feet? Yes? Okay. Uh, what did I do? Ah, okay. So she's, a, she's old. She's 87. I mean, there's probably tall, <laughs> old 87 olds, but she's like, she's small. And I, I held her, her hands and before we did a little bit of trying to sit down and get up again, but what, which, which is good, but her, I mean, if you reach 87, you have, you have many problems in the body. So she, her one leg is a little bit twisted and the other leg is hurting a lot. So uh, this, this whole squat up, squat down movements, I mean, it's, it's very important to do those movements, to, 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 to practice every day. And she does practice every day a lot, she tells me, and she improves a lot. And that's why her daughter keeps bringing her, because the improvement is apparent. Hmm. Okay, so I held her two hands. So imagine, imagine you standing in front of me. I hold your hands. And then come to stand on both feet. So I didn't stand too wide, so we, stand, we don't stand too narrow. When we stand very narrow, it's easy to fall to the side. When we stand too far away, we are stable, but we can't move very well because we're in a fixed position. So the, the feet must be in a stance where you easy to move, but uh, yeah, that's it. Where you feel safe and easy to move. So. I, I held her and then we used, so it's my left leg and it's your right leg, which you're going to stand on and then you're going to lift your left leg and just put the left leg to the side. So you stand wider and then you come lift the right leg and then you stand smaller again, narrower. And wider again to the side 
and <laughs> narrow again. <laughs> so if we do this together, if I hold your hand, we have to feel that. And so in order to be able to lift your, your left leg or me, my right leg, we have to bring, you have to bring your weight onto your right leg. So you can lift your left leg just a little bit and take a step to the side so you're wider and then you come closer again. Seems like a small thing, but very important. Actually, this could work with music, yeah? Step to the side, step to the middle, step to the side, step to the middle, step to the side, step to the middle. That's for healthy young people. But even if you're healthy and young, you can benefit from this movement just by going through it with a lot of awareness, with a lot of co being conscious about move. In order to shift your weight, you have to l in order to lift your leg, you have to shift the weight on the other leg. So you can do that step and then come back. 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 So you can do that with your mom or with your dad or with yourself. And always watch if they get tired because old people get tired when they do movements they're not used to or they're strenuous or they are hurting in all sorts of places in the back, in the neck, in the shoulders. So you can, you can take a rest in between. Oh, even for me, it's nice to take a rest and then come up again. So there's different kinds of places where we can put the feet. Let give me give you a close up of close up of my feet position, foot position, like this. So step to the side, come back. Step to the side, come back. And now there's different positions we, you could put your foot more in front, more to the side, or more in the back. So don't step always exactly to the side, but a little bit more in front and then back. A little bit more in front and then back. A little bit even more in front and then back. A little bit even more in front and then get back. You could think of a giant circle or big circle going here and you're trying to step on all the parts of the circle. Come here and come back. Come here and come back. Come here and come back. Then backwards. This might be difficult so to, to step backwards, to step backwards might be difficult because of the hip joints, because this, this has to work differently. The, the leg has to extend backwards, which can be very difficult because for people who have strong flexor muscles and can only lift the leg, they can go into flexion because they are afraid, they are, have lost balance, their, sense, their good sense of balance many years ago. So they are afraid and they are in this flex position and they can only flex, flex, yeah, flex like in the gymnastics class, only use the flexors, but they can't extend very well. And so it's difficult to extend the leg backwards to do this step backwards. So when they're pushed from the front, they, ca they cannot do this step and then they will fall or will uh, fall, uh, <laughs> fall to the side. Do, do, you, do you know what I mean? So they, they would have to turn to step backwards. So they have no way of of just putting the, the leg backwards. And we, we can, if we, if we have this hip joint mobility and, and this pelvic mobility, but maybe all people, or the people you want to care of, or maybe yourself, you don't have this easy available movement anymore. So, in order to get that movement back, I did a different position with my client, the 87 year old lady. Quite a special movement. So this is an invention of Doctor of me. <laughs> Kneeling over the table is an invention. Of, I learned it in my Feldenkrais professional training, but what I sh show you now is kind of my invention. So I use my so I use my table, not my table, my bed, but you can use your couch or your Feldenkrais table if you have one. So I had the old my client, the woman stand in front of the table then kneel down, take the iPod out of the pocket, and then lay over the table. I'm going to teach that a couple of more times, and I'm going to do a course about that, a YouTube or a Vimeo, or some kind of course, online course, but just quickly. I had her lay over the table, which is quite genius, because then her pelvis is stable and had her just lay comfortably, rest for like one or two minutes, 
and then start to extend the leg upwards. So now the upper body is resting, the pelvis is stable and it's this movement of the leg backwards, at least in a straight position and then up. Yeah, And then the same thing with the other leg. So there should be no turning of the pelvis and no shifting of the weight or wiggling of the tail, just a pure lifting of the leg for which you would use the glutes. And this lifting of the legs on the table, this was a secret ingredient. The, cup, the first couple of movements she couldn't really do it, she was like ah, hurting everywhere, she didn't know where to put the leg, she, she had no sense for this movement. I think this kind of sense for movement gets lost if we don't invest ourselves in improvement, improvement work on ourselves. So this movement did a lot for her. And she's practicing it at home. Of course, she was clinging to the table. <laughs> she's now she's holding her couch with her arms, which is okay. Just hold the couch and lift the leg. Just until, do that a couple of times. And if you're young and you're fit, you just try this movement a couple of times until you have the hang of it and you can feel how to do it, how your glutes engage, how your hamstrings engage, and how you just put the leg back straight. So back to our exercise. So, Coming on one leg and put your your foot to the outside, forward, just around the circle in, in all the all places of the circle and also backwards. So the movement on the uh, how is it how is it called uh, lying over the table and lifting the leg will prepare you for this step, for being able to put the leg backwards. Yeah. And then you don't fall backwards anymore when you, when you lo lose your weight, but you can put your leg backwards and back again. Leg backwards and back again. And of course you do the same thing with the other, uh, with the other foot. So it's, you lose balance, you're falling forward, you stop your fall. So this is a more extreme variation. You fall forwards, you stop your fall. You fall to the side, you stop your fall. You fall backwards, you stop your fall. So with the weight on the leg. And you can do this with music, but music is distracting. So it's not really a dance, but it's an awareness exercise. Something you, you do with both legs. Yeah. And then after you did this for a couple of times, just stand and feel how you're standing. And you should feel more, if you have this sense of feeling, that's another thing we need to develop, being able to sense differences, a before and after difference. So for some, some people it will be just mad, I don't feel anything, I don't feel a big difference, I don't feel any difference at all. <laughs> you know, but if you're sensitive and you start to feel more, ah, there's something in the hip joint, and then you, you more, when you lift your leg, you lift your leg, you put it to stand, you lift your leg to put it to stand, that's another variation of the exercise, you can stomp into the, those places. Yeah, stomp backwards, stomp forwards. Hello, neighbors. <laughs> stomp to the side. Uh, maybe even cross over. I didn't do that with her yet. Cross over. So when you're walking and you're tripping, you have the you you're already used to that movement. You're trained in the movement of falling, of of tripping and putting that foot there. So you, you stop the fall. You're putting the foot in the back and you come up, foot in the back and you come up, foot in the back and you come up, foot in the back and you come up. So it was a rather long video for a very simple movement, but it's so important. And I think sometimes we forget how the small things lead to improvement. It's not just the push-ups and the pull-ups, and the uh, inversions where you do handstands with uh, five books on your feet. No, it's such a simple thing and you can go deeper once you do the crude stuff, like crude stepping. We do, huh? The crude stepping, you can start to feel more, be more still and start to make it like a meditation. Make it very slow and forget about the world and just feel, feel inside how it feels like to shift your weight on one leg and then put your foot and then bring your foot back. Uh, shift the weight, 
place your foot, shift the weight, place your foot, shift the weight, place your foot. Can you hear how peaceful it is? How quiet? All right, my name is Alphonse. I teach this kind of Feldenkrais stuff, this kind of movement stuff. This wasn't really a, like a Feldenkrais lesson, which is like a fall prevention technique. Uh, I hope it was interesting, gave you some ideas. Please leave your comments in the comment section, uh, how you work with it, if, if it gave you any ideas to uh, share with other people. Uh, I am very happy and glad that you watch my channel and hope to see you in the next video.